is in critical condition this morning after being shot by Aurora police. We're live with the latest on the investigation. Police are looking for the suspect who used a ruse scheme to rob a woman in West Ridge. Plus, Evanston City leaders are expected to discuss its controversial back tax proposal as we welcome you on this busy Monday morning. Live from Chicago, number one news, ABC 7 Eyewitness News at 7 starts streaming now. Well, good morning to you, everyone. I'm Val Warner. And I'm Terrell Brown. Sixth day of February, here it is. Yes. Um, just want to apologize to you now. I kind of got muck mouth going on. Oh. I can't read, can't talk, at all kinds of dental work done last week. So but you're here. I'm here. And you're with the, 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 No, right? <laughs> it, it's not very comfortable no, to do that. that before yeah, too, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know what? We still got a lot to talk about. Sure to do. Still to come this hour, the history lesson. Last night at the fifth Grammy Awards, the brand new winner, the EGOT, and the All Star tribute to hip hop music. And all of that coming up later on this hour. Yeah, we're going to dish a whole lot about the Grammys. Uh, first, I want to talk about the weather. Uh, and, and Tracy, it's another day, and I've said it a whole bunch this year. <laughs> we cannot complain. Not at all. About what we have in the, what, February 6th, and we're talking about 40s? I know, yeah. Above average, certainly. Our Take average it. high today is 33 degrees. We are going to head above that 44 degrees is what I am forecasting for an afternoon high. Now we have a little ways to get there. 21 right now in Gary. It is 20 degrees Valparaiso in Kankakee. It is 13 though in Waukegan, 18 in DeKalb. Some of these areas with a little bit more of a snowpack. Well, that's where you are seeing some of those colder temperatures. So yes, we are going to see a mix of clouds and sun today. Look at all the 40s coming our way here this week. We'll dive into some more details about rain that's coming our way this week. And that's in my next report. Let's check in with Roz. I do not have any 40s in report. Right now, the travel times are any 30 to maybe 35 minutes tops. We don't have any new crashes. Expressways, tollways are pretty calm. Most of our issues have been out in the suburbs. Even the Kennedy, which is usually starting to get pretty slow at this time, is moving. That's the North Avenue curve. It's a lot of traffic. It's moving. We've got a crash being cleared up in the Lombard area it's on North Avenue, just west of 355. Traffic just a little snug right at the intersection there. We'll check traffic again for you in about 10 minutes or so. Val and Terrell. I got Russ, thank you. We'll get you the on this breaking news. A man is in critical condition. A rural police officer shot him outside of the home. And then those officers say that the man was threatening them and us with knives yesterday. Stephanie Wade is live in Aurora this morning where police plan to release more information today. Stephanie. Val and Terrell Aurora Police and to provide more information about this case this morning at 11 a.m. The man's family says this began as a mental health situation and ended in violence. Aurora Police say it was just before 11 a.m. Sunday morning when they were called to a home on Colorado Avenue near Elmwood for reports of a man armed with multiple knives making threats toward people. Family members tell us off camera at the time he was having a mental health episode and they called the police after he had a dispute with his girlfriend. Investigators say when officers arrived, they found the 21 year old man armed with knives. A neighbor who says she witnessed the shooting tells us these were trying to get the man to come out from the garage. Police say they were trying to calm the situation down before the man urged an officer armed with knives. And that's when police say the officer fired their weapon on the driveway. Now, the man's family says he was shot multiple times right now. He is in critical condition at the hospital as we await more information from police. Val and Terrell, back to you. All right, Stephanie, thank you. Chicago police think three men working together were able to target a woman. Yeah, they got into that home over the weekend in West Ridge. Diane Pathy was live with more on what happened in the warning for others, Diane. That's right, and it happened in the apartment building right over my right shoulder, Val and Terrell. It happened yesterday afternoon in the middle of the day. Police say a woman thought construction workers were at her door, but it was really all just a ruse. Chicago police say the suspects arrived here in the 20. 400 block of West Benmar at around 3.30 yesterday afternoon. One of those suspects knocked on the woman's apartment door, told the woman there was some construction to do in the building. After a few minutes, the woman noticed two suspects inside of her apartment. Three of the suspects then took off from the scene and into an alley. She told police they took off with several of her belongings. Police tell us right now no one is in custody as they continue their investigation. Back to you. All right, got it, Diane. Thank you for the update. Five past the hour watching this breaking news.
out of Turkey and Syria this morning. Uh, an unbelievable situation that has been a major earthquake, and the number of dead keeps rising. We're now 1,300, and I, I can't even believe I'm saying it. Right. More than 1,300 people have been killed in this 7.8 magnitude quake. Hit southern Turkey and northern Syria during early hours when people were asleep. There have been dozens of aftershocks since. ABC's Derek Dennis has more. Death and destruction in south central Turkey and in neighboring Syria. A magnitude 7.8 earthquake followed by a series of aftershocks, leaving a rising number of dead and dozens of buildings destroyed. At the top of one building, arcing wires could be seen lighting up the sky. The main tremor felt in at least nine cities. Survivors out of breath and in a daze, searching for loved ones buried in debris. The epicenter in the Turkish city of Karaman Maras, near the border with Syria. So close, the Syrian civil defense declared an emergency, noting the collapse of several residential buildings and activating teams to rescue the stranded and those trapped under the rubble. But the damage in Turkey is extensive. Even those whose homes are still standing saw light fixtures sway as debris fell around them. The White House National Security Advisor issuing a statement saying President Biden has directed U.S. aid and other federal government partners to assess U.S. response options. We have one house filled with a deploying trucks, rerouting trucks from Warsaw. We're already flying through this afternoon straight to uh, Turkey. And we're already at the airport right now from Warsaw. So they'll be landing there by like 1.30. And Turkey's President Erdogan tweeted. The quake was felt in many parts of the country, adding search and rescue teams have immediately dispatched and expressing his hope we will get through this disaster together. The death toll between Turkey and Syria is staggering and search crews are only beginning to comb through the rubble. Serious civil defense calling it a catastrophe. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. All right, Derek, and we're going to keep watching the situation. We'll bring you updates throughout this newscast online, of course. And uh, Good Morning America is watching this right now as well. We'll keep you posted. And right now, U.S. Navy divers are working to try to recover debris from that suspected Chinese spy balloon that was shot down over the weekend. It's got all kinds of talk over the weekend. Meanwhile, Washington is divided over the president's response to this. ABC's Faith Abube is live in Washington with what we know this morning, Faith. Yeah, good morning to you, Terrell and Val. Amid strong Republican criticism of how President Biden has handled the Chinese spy balloon, the administration says China did the same thing three times during the Trump administration. This morning, Navy divers urgently trying to recover what's left of a now destroyed Chinese spy balloon after it spent days traversing the U.S. A fighter jet striking the balloon Saturday with a missile. Break one, splash one. That is a key kill. The debris field spread seven miles across shallow waters of the coast of South Carolina. What the Coast Guard is looking for is where is that payload? Where is the metal? of the balloon that was underneath that balloon holds the sensors. China accusing the U.S. of, quote, excessive reaction to the balloon, claiming it was a civilian airship. Meanwhile, Republicans criticizing the Biden administration say the U.S. should not have allowed the balloon to drift over its airspace for days. I can assure you that if we fly a balloon over China, they're going to shoot it down, and probably a lot sooner than we did. Democrats hitting back. I would use two words in answering the criticisms. They are premature. They are political. Our friends are in politics with U.S. intelligence. Senior Biden administration officials say the military took immediate steps to protect against sensitive military information and that President Biden ordered the balloon to be shut down as soon as it posed no risk to people on the ground. They also reveal that after former President Trump left office, Authorities discovered that China used spy balloons over the U.S. at least three times during the Trump administration. Former Trump administration officials, including Trump himself, have denied the claims. And once the Navy divers for the balloon debris, the FBI is expected to take the custody of any components they find and ship them to a lab in Quantico, Virginia, for intelligence gathering. 
Val, Terrell, back to you. All right, Faith Abuve live in Washington. Security is being increased around the U.S. Capitol ahead of President Biden's State of the Union address. Fencing was put up yesterday around the ground of the building. Similar fencing was also installed last year of the Union address. You can watch President Biden's address tomorrow night at 8 right here on ABC7. Back here at home, Illinois has a new state representative. Lamont Mayor John Egoski was chosen to represent the 82nd District, which includes parts of Cook, DuPage, and Will Counties. He'll replace former House Republican leader Jim Durkin. Igofsky will also continue to serve as Lamont mayor. Now to a breaking news update. Chicago police are looking for a gunman after a 16-year-old boy was killed. The shooting was last night as the teen was walking near Cermak and Keeler. This is in the Lawndale neighborhood. Investigators say two people got out of a vehicle and started shooting. No one is in custody. Church members held a prayer service outside of a Southside Chicago church yesterday. A fire destroyed the building. Members met at Universal Temple of Christ in Training School in West Englewood. They asked the community for support as they rebuilt. Saturday, one firefighter was hurt. Universal Temple's pastor says her congregation plans to go to Easter Church while they raise money to rebuild. There's no word yet on a cause. Evanston City leaders are expected to discuss a proposed bag tax today. A committee make their changes to the ordinance to impose a 15 cent tax on payout bags at all businesses. The tax would not apply to bags for prescription drugs, newspapers, or loose produce. The proposal also would ban plastic bags starting April 1st of next year. NASCAR Street Race planned for this summer has added some star power to the roster of participants. Seven-time NASCAR Cup Series and Jimmy Johnson will be out there driving the number 84 car in the July 2nd race. It'll happen on the streets of downtown Chicago. In a statement, Johnson calls the street race format, quote, a good vibe and experience like no other. <laughs> you can say that again for us today. Yeah, I don't know what the heck is going on with this whole thing. And we live here. Mm -hmm. All right, we're live on local news. That's getting started this morning. Coming up, who may be eligible to get taxes done for free online through the IRS free filing program. That sounds good. Uh, first, Tracy, you got your with a forecast for some areas of this morning. We got four days. We got four We make a plan. Good morning. What well, is a pretty good morning around Chicago this morning? Albeit a little on the cold side of things, a, a frost start to our day. But look at the coming days around here. Tomorrow morning, we start the day with some light rain. I, I don't expect any frozen form precipitation. The earliest we could see something in a frozen form is most likely here on Friday and even that just looks like some flurries. Thursday looks rainy and windy. As for today, so it is a start, but we are going to see that sun out there today. Cloudy and windy overnight tonight. Light rain will spread into the area, but it exits the region fairly early tomorrow. So again, a quiet squire day today, timing out the rain. It's primarily during the overnight hours. Here's 4 a.m. tomorrow. You can see it's even gone by then. Then 
We have tomorrow and Wednesday that look pretty quiet. Clouds on the increase here Wednesday and then rain is going to start to move back into the area here on Thursday and Thursday looks kind of windy around here as well. Our average high today is 33 degrees and we're going to best that for certain. Notice the sunrise was up. 659 this morning right now out at O'Hare. We are at 24 degrees. Winds are light wind chill. Not much of a factor out there this morning. Let's see what factors are involved on the roads. Roz. We've got a little bit of everything going on. We're going to start with a CTA delay on the Brown line for Kimball bound trains. They're running a little behind schedule An earlier mechanical problem with the train at the Sedgwick station. Big picture travel times are inching their way up. Now we're looking at maybe 35 to 40 minute averages for the inbound commute between the tri state and downtown. We don't have any new crashes on the expressway. We've had a lot of stalls, but they've all been on the shoulder. So pretty tame. But we do have Pretty bad. It's in an industrial area in Chicago Heights along Washington Avenue near 11th Street. And there is quite a bit of response. So we're keeping a very close eye on that. We'll have more details in our next update. Alan Terrell. Thank you. Well, it is tax season, and whether you do your taxes yourself or you hire a professional, getting the tax system can be complicated and full. ABC's Alexis Christophorus has some advice to make the process easier. If you're expecting a refund, filing your taxes early and electronically means you'll get your money sooner. But the IRS is warning those refunds may be smaller this year because COVID-related tax perks have expired. So no more stimulus payments, for example. That was something that juiced a lot of refunds last year. Also last year, the child tax credit was expanded and the child independent care credit was expanded and there, there were some additional credits that no longer exist. Experts say a large tax bill or an outsized tax refund may be signs that you need to change your number of tax withholdings. Keep in mind if your lifestyle is changing or has changed, like you got married, you got divorced, you had a child. These are all things that can affect your withholdings. Avoid late fee penalties by filing your taxes by the April 18th deadline. If you need to file an extension and if you can't pay your tax bill on time. Your best option might be to work out an extension with the IRS. They're actually remarkably forthcoming with this, especially if you owe under $50,000. When choosing a tax preparer, look for a credentialed certified public accountant or tax attorney and be sure they have a personal tax ID number. And if you do get a tax refund, experts say use at least some of that money to pay down credit card debt. With credit card interest rates now averaging 20 percent, paying down debt quickly is a good return on your money. If you earn $73,000 or less last year, you may be eligible to get your tax is done for free online through the IRS free filer program. Resources like Cash App Taxes and TurboTax also offer free filing options. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. Hey, if you can get your taxes done for free, <laughs> yeah, take advantage of that. Absolutely. There's some price in there. Mm -hmm. It's all the documents for me, man. Oh, gosh. 18 past the hour. Uh, when we come back, the Powerball jackpot, it's growing now. Uh, there was no winner over the weekend. Today is now the fifth biggest jackpot in the game's oh, history. We're just on Groundhog Day. Isn't that yeah, where you repeat right? the days over again? Yep. We just have the story. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about it coming up. Eyewitness News streaming at 7. The news after a break.
Investigators find out today of someone purposely set a set restaurant on fire. The fire broke up the weekend at Joy's Fish and Chicken, 95th and Halstead. The restaurant's owner says nearby surveillance cameras captured a man walking in that area when this happened. Even though he has insurance, the owner says he is not sure about rebuilding. When you work hard, you're doing your business, remodeling the store, bought a lot of money invested in this location. If somebody doing it, like, I'm not going to open it. Yeah, I'm not going to open it. I'm going to take a risk again. Wow. And just a few days ago, burglars targeted the business right next door by trying to drive a U-Haul through that store. We're not successful doing that. Happening today, the Illinois State Treasurer's online auction kicks off. People can bid on more than 400 items of unclaimed. There are collectible coins, rare sports cars, and even jewelry among the unclaimed items. Bidding runs through Friday. You must pre-register, and we have a link to that on abc7chicago.com and on our news app. The jackpot for tonight's Powerball drawing will be at least worth $747 million. That's a uh, because nobody matched all the numbers in Saturday night's drawing. Tonight's jackpot now ranks as the fifth largest in Powerball history, the ninth largest in U.S. history. Cash prize option comes out to just over $400 million. Uh, there hasn't been a winner since November 9th. And even if you didn't hit the jackpot over the weekend, there's still a chance that you won something. So here are those numbers, 2, 8, 15, 19, 58. The Powerball is 10. Mm. Well, some puppies from Texas are headed to Paws, Chicago. They're scheduled to arrive this morning and will be available for adoption real soon. This little lady right here, her name's Twister, both with the tornado and uh, shaped patch that's on her chest. And then, of course, also in remembrance of the tornado that ripped the roof off of a Texas shelter, which led to this rescue effort. Some really, really cute pups. I know, especially those right there. They look like twins. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, link up with everybody that's watching GMA right now. Tanya's here. News update just a bit. You'll see here too. And then we'll come back. How young men from Chicago scored a freak trip to this year's Super Bowl. An update from ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Good morning, 23. I'm Tanya Babich. Later this morning, Aurora police plan to give an update after an officer man. Police tell us they were called to a home yesterday for a 21 year old man armed with several knives and making threats. The man allegedly charged at an officer, and that's when the officer shot him several times. At last check, he was in critical condition. The man's family says this was the result of a mental health. We'll have more on this coming up at 11 o'clock. Let's get a check of our ABC7 AccuWeather forecast now with meteorologist Butler. Hi there, Tanya. Good morning. Well, right now, a variety of temperatures on our map, including 14 in Aurora, 19 degrees in DeKalb, 13 right now in Waukegan, 21 in Gary, and 26 degrees out at Midway. Today, on our way up, yet again, mid is where we will land, and a mix of clouds and sun, too. Tonight will be cloudy, be fairly windy, and we are going to have some light rain that moves through the area. It should really be up and out of here early tomorrow. All these days in the 40s coming our way. Thursday looks rainy and windy. We'll take a break, Roz, after this. Now's the time for a healthy start. So let's move. Let's re and recharge and put our health first. Let's be well. To do that, let's eat well. Breathe deep. Find joy in the little moments. And do what we love with who we love. Together, let's live well. Advocate Aurora.
back everybody we're looking at about 35 to 40 minute average travel times on the expressways with quite a few crashes in the suburbs this morning this one is in glen allen along Route 53 and butterfield road butterfield road pretty backed up directions we also have a crash out in dupage county in burr ridge 83 at frontage road that is also causing delays but we're also keeping close eye on a pretty big fire in an industrial area in Chicago Heights. It's on Washington Avenue near uh, near 11th Street, and we are hearing a lot of response battling this blaze. We'll have more details as they become available. This morning, some men are heading next weekend Super Bowl. It's all thanks to a local nonprofit, Eric Thomas's School Days Foundation. Those are the six mentees for the Channel Mail Mentoring Program. It will see the Eagles take on the Park College Prep, City's West Side. Look at that. It looks like they got some swag, too. Yeah, they're, they're, okay. they ready. They got their fits together for this Super Bowl trip. That's going to be nice to go to Arizona this time of year. Great game, I think. I mean, yeah. On tap, right? Yeah, and I was talking earlier about the, you know, the tickets for this thing. Are expensive. Off the chain right now. It's yeah. awesome for them to have that opportunity. All right. Look, coming up this morning. We are breaking down history being made at last night's Grammy Award. Watching ABC 7 Eyewitness News at 7. Streaming live now. Bottom of the hour here at 730, taking a look at the morning's top stories and more than 1,300 people. And the, the video is unbelievable to watch. Uh, the numbers of the people killed are also unbelievable this morning. A major earthquake in Turkey, more than 1,300 people dead. The 7.8 magnitude quake hit near the Turkey-Syrian border. Hundreds of buildings have been toppled. Rescue crews are searching for anyone who may be trapped in the rubble. Mm. And a man is in condition after being shot by Aurora police. Those officers say the man was threatening them and others with not. Family members tell us off camera police were called because the 21 year old having a mental health episode after a dispute with his girlfriend. Evanston city leaders are expected to talk about a controversial bag tax proposal today. A city committee committee is expected to talk about changes to that ordinance, which would impose a 15 cent tax on carry out bags at all Evanston businesses. The proposal would also ban plastic bags starting April 1st of next year. I mean, 15 cents in the city here is Here's, eight cents. Oh, is it eight? I, was yeah. wondering, I feel like it's happening everywhere. Yeah, no, it's eight cents yes. here. Charles, mm. I went to the store last night. <laughs> did you get plastic bags? <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to ask me I enter the right number of plastic bags oh, I Oh, that's use. right. You know you have to do that. That's right. Like at yes. Whole Foods, you got to put in. Oh, that's right. Oh, yes. And it's, I it's, know it's, people don't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that look that you just gave said it all. No, I didn't say a thing, nor did I give a look. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back, Val Warner. And I'm Terrell Brown. Look at outside this morning. Uh, it is cold. We got fog. And Tracy, overall, not a bad day today. 
Yeah, kind of a cold start to our day. I'm just watching fire engines just rolling down State Street here. Uh, good morning. 24 degrees right now at O'Hare. It is 26 degrees at Midway and one right now in Gary. Well, today we do welcome that shine and temperatures will be on the way up yet again. Uh, the fog we were reporting early, we're done with that. Temperatures on their way up into the mid 40s this afternoon. Roz? We start with the big picture, 35 to 40 minute travel times on most expressways between the tri-state and downtown. We've had a lot of suburban issues this morning. Here's a couple more crashes in at Maple Avenue and College Road. We also have one up in Lake County. This is going to be on Route 60, a little bit north of Peterson in the, the Mundelein, Wakanda area. and is causing delays, particularly southbound on Route 60. And then, of course, this, this uh, we believe, to be an extra alarm fire in Chicago Heights. This has been going on for a while. Area of Washington Avenue and 11th Street. Val and Terrell. All right, Ross, thank you. It's what we're talking about this morning over here on the couch. It's starting, of course, with the 65th Grammy Award. History was made last night and on so many different levels from an artist who just broke the record for the grant, all the Grammy wins to a newly minted EGOT. Here's ABC's Will Gans with the highlights. Welcome to the Grammy Awards, where Queen B reigns supreme. I'm trying not to be too emotional. And I'm trying to just receive this night. On the night when she broke the record as the most awarded individual in Grammy's history, she almost didn't make it there at all. The downside of hosting the Grammys in LA is the traffic. She stays on her way. Beyonce missing her first win of the night, stuck in traffic. And the queen is officially in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, Beyonce Knowles. Lizzo winning record of the year. Beyonce, whoo! In the fifth grade, I skipped school to see you perform. My sister, she got me out of school. It was literature, I'm good. At music's biggest night, The biggest musicians on the planet gathering to say hi in English and Espanol. Yeah, buena noche, Grammy. And sing a little bit too. From Bad Bunny's epic opener <laughs> to Stevie, Smokey, and Chris Stapleton. <laughs> to an all star tribute to hip hop. History made more than once at the 65th Grammy Awards. Sam graciously wanted me to accept this award because I'm the first uh, transgender woman to win this award. And history repeating itself. Oh, God, Rich, he, he said, don't cry. You win anything tonight, don't cry. And here I'm crying. Just Album of the year going not to Beyonce, nor so. <laughs> Harry Styles. And thanks to a win for Best Audiobook, Viola Davis officially joins the exclusive E Club, having won an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Award, and so deserved. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Now to the fashion on the red carpet. Lizzo hit the red carpet in a bright orange Dolce and Gabbana coat. Let's say that that is at a. Look at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wait it's a minute. There's a whole lot going on. Her nails were even orange. Really? Oh, okay, so that. this is how much I'm paying attention. Did you notice in the shot that we are with the No, those are nails. Two seconds ago, we did show her in the silver. Mm -hmm. Her nails were silver. She was covered for Beyonce. Oh, wow. Is it that much of a change? Oh, wow. Wow. It had, I digress. Um, it had a large hood and was entirely embroidered with handmade silk flowers. Oof. For that time, a fan wrote in to Lizzo and said, we're addressing Lizzo. Yeah. I wonder if somebody will write in. <laughs> That's, <laughs> that one was hot, that one too. Right. She looks like she's having trouble kind of walking. <laughs> I know. That's a whole lot going on. You should have seen Cardi B on that. Like, they had handlers. It is well, unbelievable. They, they need it. I yeah. Mean, like, Cardi B, I felt like if she made one wrong move, she's going to be butt-naked on that red carpet. <laughs> you saw that blue? Yeah, I did see but it. But it was like, this thing was, she couldn't yeah, see. Yeah, she couldn't see, right. But they were the... Oh, I want to see that. Yeah, I know. The fashion analysts or, you know, commentators, they loved it. Oh, yeah. They I'm said sure. it was something off of Out of Perry. Okay, Lizzo, with your corset. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. I like that. I love so that. Orange. That looks yeah. really pretty. It mm -hmm. does.
love that orange. Yeah. And the flowers yeah. with the little bedazzling. Yeah. Fabulous. Uh, Harry Styles showed up in a rainbow Harley Quinn <laughs> pattern jute covered in Swarovski crystals. Um, this is from Egon Lab. It's a young brand out of Paris. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Like, if, if I showed up to work with something that like that on, y'all would tell me that I look like a bum and I need to go home and change clothes and what... Harry Styles does it, and he's trend-setting, and, and yeah. you know, it's well, the new thing. It's only because he's in Hollywood. He can he do Right this. here in Chicago <laughs> with us, you can't do that. Yeah. Let me tell you right. something. If you went to L.A., you and could do that. that. That's true. That's oh, true. yeah, you no, could totally you could do that. Oh, come on, do it. You think come so? Come on. I feel Just like people, y'all would talk about me like a dog if I, I came wouldn't. up in here with something like that. <laughs> I would. You wouldn't? No. You're the only one I know who could pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you got to get some of those tattoos. Okay, here's Mary J. Blige. She shimmered in a crystal covered curve hugging hip bearing oh. gown oh wow yeah. yes. oh, wow. that's hot that is hot yeah uh, 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 by the blondes with gold belt and uh with shoulder going crazy uh, sister love hoops and the ring from uh shine like me um so that looks like you would wear by the way would you wear that you know what no no and, and contrary to what you might believe i do love a cut out yeah I, right. I love cut out, I love back out, I love all that stuff. But what's up with this? I don't, I didn't love it. Well, I mean, it's a question. Like, if I'm taking a picture with Mary J. Where do you and Thank you! <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Well, you're not put your hands below her waist anyway. Oh, that's, that's, okay, got it. Because the okay. cutouts are down there. there you yeah. Should, yeah. I don't like the way it pushes up that part of the, the hip, hip to butt to connecting air. I, I'm not, but yeah. her, here's the thing. Mary J is 50 plus. She looks amazing. Uh -huh. um, you know, that it just wasn't my favorite right. for her. Mm -hmm. But I do love a cutout. Hello. And a shoulder out close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, Casey Musgraves, I mean, I don't know. Um, loves an all pink moment. Uh, the country star proved that she's definitely still in her Barbie core era. Head to toe, baby pink Valentino. There it is, the bodysuit underneath. Uh, included a feather coat on top, skin tight bodysuit, and pointy heels. See, I'm surprised you did not, not wear this. You wear this? Heck yeah. A bodysuit? Yeah. With those feathers? Heck yeah. yeah. It's giving me pink panther vibes. Oh, but I love that pink too. <laughs> I think that is pretty pink. It is. Mm -hmm. It is a great really pink. You know, pink, it looks good on her, that yeah. shade. Yeah. It's not the pepper. Pink. The, I, you know, it's a little lighter. She looks good in it, though. Oh, yes, she does. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.
Well, welcome back to our streaming show this morning. And as you look at the temperatures, 24 degrees at O'Hare, you're at 14 though in Aurora, 22 in Brazo, it's 23 degrees now in Piatone. Out in Oak Park, we're at 24 degrees, 20 Mount Prospect, 19 in Algonquin, uh, it's 15 West Chicago, 24 in Frankfurt, and 21 now in Gary. Today, mix of clouds and sun, highest today up into the 40s. Now tomorrow, very early tomorrow, there will be some rain in the area and then we'll top out 40s once again. You take a look at that seven day and no bitter cold air. Uh, Wednesday, clouds will be on the increase. That's going to lead us to a rainy and windy Thursday. Our next best chance to see any flurries or snow showers is going to come in here on Friday and Friday's highs will be in the mid 30s. Does look like a fairly tranquil weekend is ahead. Not so tranquil though when you look at road conditions uh, and traffic this morning and any breaking news, Ross. Right, Tracy, we've been watching this fire in Chicago Heights in the Washington Avenue with 11th Street. Choppers have just arrived over the scene. It's a massive fire. It is a very fast burn for Tech at the Smoke Plume. It is over a thousand feet high and that building is going to be a total loss. It's in an industrial area. It's a warehouse. This is what we're hearing. There are multiple uh, different fire departments on the scene right now. But as they, as they widen out the shot and pull out, look at that smoke plume. Like I said, it's over a thousand feet high and uh, we, we are in touch with folks in Chicago Heights. The mayor is going to be making a, a statement pretty soon. We're getting more information. So this is a very active fire. Again, it is in the area area of Washington Avenue and 11th Street. So we will continue to, to monitor the situation. We don't have any idea, any information as to how it started. We're not hearing uh, any reports of injuries yet, but we are working to get all this information. You can see how many tower letters have surrounding this building trying to get this thing under control. So more to come. Val and Terrell, back to you. Yeah, I mean, when we first saw it, uh, as we all kind of gasped, uh, it, it is a massive blaze, as you just said. All right, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it this hour and bring folks updates as we get some more information in this morning. So we're a little more than a week away from Valentine's Day. It is never too early to start making plans. That's right. And if you feel like you're going to want to go a little fancy this year, we have a new first of its kind concept restaurant that you might want to check out and joining us this morning from the M room on North Clark Street in Chicago is mixologist Jason Huffman. Glad to have you here and executive chef Mark Amborn. Good to have you here. Good to see you guys. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you. So, what do you guys have planned for Valentine's Day? We're a week and a day away. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I mean, for Valentine's Day, I mean, we're doing a nice tasting menu and we have a nice special surprise for Valentine's Day. And then uh, Jason has a beautiful cocktail menu to go along with it. And we're going to eat and drink while we have you guys here. Let's start with the food. And uh, Chef, what you got going on? Sure, absolutely. This is one of our first courses that we'd offer. Um, it is a toro sashimi and a wagyu tataki. Ooh. And the ingredients that we use in this is the same ingredients that go into whiskey. So we're trying to honor the whiskey and the food as well. Is that gold? Uh, it is gold leaf. And then you also have some uh, yeast. And then in the wagyu, you also have some barley. But like I said, I mean, these are ingredients that are used in the whiskey making process. And then we put it into the food as well. Is that how, raw? Yeah, it's it raw. Okay, gotcha. yeah. How many courses are we talking about for this Valentine's Day meal for who may be interested? Um, nine savory and one sweet. Nine savory. Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. that is going to be a fantastic night. Shall I? I was going to say, somebody's okay. got to eat it. <laughs> right. It looks delicious. And is this, is this the display? Is it on a bed of uh... Uh, seaweed? Ooh. Oh, okay. Ooh. All right, so do well, you, all right, now, now that's my question is how do you eat it, right? Do you take the seaweed and then wrap it? Oh, yeah. no. You just take each piece and eat it individually. Oh, okay. okay. And do you tell them I'm using my fingers so I don't look like I don't have any glasses? <laughs> We forgot to bring chopsticks. I mean, I have my uh, plating tongs you can use. Right. I, I, I typically would use my cheater chops in a situation like right. this, but I am going to go in this way and grab it. Mm. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. It's yeah. really good. Uh, tell us this one right here. That one is a wagyu tataki with barley miso and then some crispy barley. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Somebody's got to do the job, that's right? right? Is this some... Um, is this um? Uh, that's a black truffle. Truffle. That's yeah. what I was gonna say. This is truffle, Ooh, I bet isn't that's it? So good. Yeah. Right. Uh oh, have I taken too big of a piece? There we go. Oh, you right. got it. Hey. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So of course, if you're if you're gonna go out there and eat all that food, how is it, Val? Is it delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. Uh, it's looks delicious. like it. So you gotta wash it down. 
Done with something, and we got some pretty good drink options here too. James. We do, we do. Uh, we're going to start you off with a non-alcoholic. Uh, we do a greeting cocktail when you walk into the restaurant. Oh, nice. We traditionally do an alcohol cocktail, but since it's the morning show, we decided to start you off. <laughs> so well, you know, with a non-alcoholic. You can still do the alcohol too. Absolutely. That's all right. We're going to move into that. <laughs> so if you want to enjoy that while we start to make yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're doing a play on a whiskey sour. Uh, Cheers. It's Cheers. twelve-year double double cask. It combines the sherry, European oak, along with American oak. So you get a little bit of vanilla, dried fruits, mm. ginger. And we're going to pair that with some really nice saffron from Apollo, which is a Chicago company, so plant business as well. Kabosu juice, which is a tangy kind of play on the bayuzu. It's tangy, a little bit fruity, and a little bit sour, all in the same way. Mm -hmm. And then Dolce Late Harvest from Farniente out of Napa is going to give you that sweetness that it really, really needs. So I'm going to go ahead and start everything on here. So we're going to do a little bit of spice. It's Valentine's Day. So yeah, you know, you've got to have a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's got to be spicy little little that night. Yep, that's right. Absolutely. And, it, that. that's and this is going to pair with food that, that you have to have a little bit of spice with. So mm -hmm. instead of doing like a traditional wasabi, so this is a tiki fire bitters. We just infuse some chilies into an agricole rum. Oh, that sounds so, good. All right. And we do two different sizes. So this would be a tasting menu size. Okay. And this would be a la carte if you wanted to enjoy that as well. Okay. Oh, I love this That's part. Nice. So you, you guys are a new restaurant, right? We How long are. have you been around? We are. Uh, we opened on December 14th of last year. December 14th. Yeah. How are things going? What's the ambiance? What's the vibe like if somebody wants to check out M Lounge? Um, it's a nice, uh, it's a small space. Um, it's intimate. Um, it is, I mean, it's it's all about the whiskey. Um, I mean, there's a beautiful bar. Um, we have all the McAllen on display. Um, it's just a very, um, like intimate and like nice and sexy environment. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's perfect for Valentine's Day. A new concept kind of restaurant? What makes you guys so so special, you think? Um, I mean, it's it's the fact that, I mean, Roca is a brand that's been for a while. And then, I mean, the McAllen is just a brand that is, it, it, it just represents much. And like to be able to um, collaborate with them mm -hmm. on, a, on a space and on a menu and on, Drinks and on food is just, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful experience for us and for the guests. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're right, Roka. I was looking at your sleeve and thinking about that. Roka has been around for a long time. Okay, well, we better not drink this on TV. We're going <laughs> well, to I mean, you know. Break. I mean, well, I can I, read this tag and you get to <laughs> sip it <laughs> up. Um, you guys, thank you so much. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. Really this nice is a guys. pleasure. Hopefully we'll see you at the restaurant. Um, Ooh, now that sounds good. <laughs> good. Date night. Uh, for more information on the M Room Chicago, we will connect you on abc7chicago.com. There's the information, too, right there on your screen. Mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, 5 to 10 p.m. Delicious, delicious, delicious. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We come back. We're learning about an amateur rapper uh, who's going viral on TikTok. Uh, how his rap lyric pop culture and current events have attracted more than 4 million followers, including Lizzo, and that includes Doja Cat. That's on the way.
Welcome back. Skateboard legend Tony Hawk says he will draft the proceeds of autograph photos of himself and next rider Rick Thorne to the Tyree Nichols Memorial Fund. And he will also be used to build a skate park in his name. The photos can be purchased online for 30 years. A thousand copies will be available. Nichols, an avid skateboarder, FedEx, and father died last month after being beaten by police during a traffic stop. All right. Um, we'll take a quick break. Yeah. Back with more in 90 seconds. All right, here's some Monday motivation. A young man from New Mexico is the next star on TikTok. That's right. In fact, his star is on the rise. Here's ABC's Will Gans again with more. Jack Black, Black Jack, Rose didn't share the door. Now Jack's a shark snack. From pop culture to geography. First date, horse race, glove shape, and Bernie Sanders. Nothing is off limits when Mikey Angelo is at the mic. Ooh, I also got a question with math. Would they be semi Lovato if you subtract a half? If Remy was human, then would this rat be that? If Doja Cat wore a cap, then his cat in the hat. I would describe the content I make as a live look into my brain and how much pop culture is just crammed in there. The 24-year-old New Mexico native grew up listening to Nicki Minaj, but now he's racked up more than 4 million followers on social media. The most enjoyable part is when I come up with a killer line or when I come up with something I'm really proud of and I'll just be like pacing my apartment like, oh my gosh, yes, yes, like this is it, this is the one. Melodian tried assassinating Katy Perry, scribbled out the word Jada in his dictionary. Looking back, is there a favorite line that comes to mind that you're like, Wow, that really was genius. <laughs> Specifically, there's a line about um, why would I use dudes that use three in one shampoos? Glad to have you thinking all the moves. Would I amuse the opinions of dudes that use? Three in one shampoos? Yep, that's Lizzo dancing along to Mikey's rhymes, and she's not the only one. Doja Cat has seen my videos, the Kardashians have shared my videos. Instead of steering clear of controversy, Mikey leans into it. He wants to erase his divorce. Nikki was chased by a horse. This a yes, this a no. It is scary knowing the world of um, Stan Twitter is out there. You just can't think about it. You just gotta post and go. He is really good. He's super yeah. talented. And he's got the look in everything. Creative. Awesome, yeah. Mikey says his all-time dream collaboration would be with the one, the only Ariana Grande. Mm -hmm. He's also featured on a song dropping later this week with another award-winning artist, but details on that are top secret. That Ariana thing is going to happen, I guarantee it. Um, yeah, Roz is keeping yeah. an eye on a really big fire, massive fire out in Chicago Heights. This is in Chicago Heights. It's a warehouse fire. Chapter 7 is over. And, you know, at one point, we had smoke of one to 2,000 feet. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. No injuries. Uh, Rosin, I'm going to let you get back to the other side to, to get more information on that. we got a, an update coming during Good Morning America. That's in 15 seconds. Hang on. We'll be right back. Now an update from ABC 7 Eyewitness News.
Okay, we are looking at a fire in Chicago Heights. This is an extra fire in a warehouse in the area of Washington Avenue and 11th Street. And firefighters from multiple departments have been battling this blaze. It is just a huge building, total loss, and we are seeing smoke plumes of one to two thousand feet. Now, fortunately, uh, the closest are about a half mile from there and the smoke is blowing in the other direction but they've got a lot of tower ladders there trying to get this thing under control we were hearing reports they might be having problems with water pressure there's a lot of street closures in that area and definitely traffic needs to avoid anywhere around washington and 11th in chicago heights tracy's forecast up next